Good day and welcome to the Yelp first quarter 2021 earnings call. All participants will be in listen-only mode. Should you need assistance, please signal a conference specialist by pressing the star key followed by zero. After today's presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchtone phone. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. Please note this event is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to James Milne, Senior Vice President of Finance and Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us on Yelp's first quarter 2021 earnings conference call. Joining me today are Yelp's Chief Executive Officer, Jeremy Stoppelman, Chief Financial Officer, David Schwarzbach, and Chief Operating Officer, Jed Nockman. We published a shareholder letter on our investor relations website and with the SEC and hope everyone had a chance to read it. We'll provide some brief opening comments and then turn to your questions. Now I'll read our safe harvest statement. We'll make certain statements today that are forward-looking and involve a number of risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially. Please note that these forward-looking statements reflect our opinions only as of the date of this call, and we undertake no obligation to revise or publicly release the results of any revision to these forward-looking statements in light of new information or future events. In addition, we are subject to a number of risks that may significantly impact our business and financial results. Please refer to our SEC filings as well as our shareholder letter for a more detailed description of the risk factors that may affect our results. During our call today, we'll discuss adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin, which are non-GAAP financial measures. These measures should not be considered in isolation from or as a substitute for financial information prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. In our shareholder letter released this afternoon and our filings with the SEC, each of which is posted on our website, you will find additional disclosures regarding these non-GAAP financial measures, as well as historical reconciliations of GAAP net income to both adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin. And with that, I will turn the call over to Jeremy. Thanks, James, and welcome, everyone. Our first quarter results represent a strong start to the year, driven by the success of our go-to-market shift and an increased focus on product innovation, which together comprise the foundation of our next stage of growth. We saw record performance from our services categories, self-serve channel, and non-term advertiser budget retention. Revenue growth in the self-serve channel accelerated once again to approximately 30% year-over-year in the first quarter. Services revenue performance was driven by ongoing strength in home services, which increased by nearly 15% year-over-year. At the same time, we are seeing consumer traffic return with the recovery in local economies, benefiting businesses in our more COVID-impacted categories. Demand from these businesses increased over the course of the first quarter. More recently, the encouraging traffic recovery trends we saw in the first quarter continued in April. Paid views and searches for home services businesses continue to exceed pre-pandemic levels, while page views and searches for restaurants have rebounded 40% from December 2020. Building on the strong momentum of our Q1 performance, we're investing in product development, marketing, and multi-location sales to support our initiatives and deliver more valued advertisers. We believe this will enable us to drive growth and scale our business in a more profitable way over the long term through increased revenue retention and a more efficient go-to-market approach. In the first quarter, lower CPCs contributed to record non-term advertiser budget retention. We were able to achieve these results with local sales headcount remaining at approximately 50% of pre-pandemic levels, which also enabled us to improve net loss by 10 million year over year to 6 million and deliver a 19% adjusted EBITDA margin while heavily investing in our growth initiatives. We are pleased with this start to the year and expect our investments to continue benefiting both revenue and adjusted EBITDA over the long term. Together with the structural changes we've made to our business over the past year, we believe we are well positioned to fully participate in the economic recovery and to deliver long-term sustainable growth in the years to come. With that, 
I'd like to turn it over to David. Thanks, Jeremy. We saw improving trends across the business over the course of the first quarter as COVID-19 cases declined and restrictions eased. As Jeremy noted, our product initiatives continue to drive strength in self-serve and our services categories. As a result of these efforts, advertiser demand increased steadily over the first quarter, which together with a record retention rate for non-term advertisers' budgets enabled us to deliver $232 million of net revenue. In addition to our strong revenue performance, we were very pleased to see another quarter of disciplined expense management while investing in our initiatives. Net loss improved by $10 million year over year to $6 million, while adjusted EBITDA increased by 159% to $44 million. The healthier than expected macro environment and a slower headcount ramp did provide some short-term benefit to expenses versus our expectations for the quarter. However, the lower headcount did not have a significant impact on revenue or our strategic initiatives, and we expect to continue investing behind our initiatives to drive our revenue momentum over the remainder of the year. Returning capital to shareholders through share repurchases remains an important element of our capital allocation strategy. Since we resumed repurchasing shares in the fourth quarter of 2020, we have repurchased approximately $99 million worth of shares as of today at an average price of $34.98 per share. We currently have approximately $170 million remaining under our current share repurchase authorization. We plan to continue repurchasing shares throughout the year, subject to market and economic conditions. Turning to our outlook, in the second quarter, we expect to move from recovery to year-over-year growth and anticipate net revenue will increase from the first quarter to fall within the range of $240 million to $250 million. In addition, as a result of our strong execution in the first quarter, we are raising our 2021 outlook for net revenue, which we now expect to be between $1 billion and $1 billion and $20 million. To drive continued growth, we plan to invest further behind our initiatives as we catch up on hiring in the second quarter. As a result, we anticipate second quarter adjusted EBITDA will fall within the range of $35 million to $45 million. And we are raising our full year 2021 outlook for adjusted EBITDA, which we now expect to be between $175 million and $195 million, with increased leverage expected toward the end of the year. In closing, our first quarter results reflect strong progress towards delivering our plans for the year. As Jeremy mentioned, these results reflect the success of our go-to-market mix shift and our increased focus on product innovation, which together lay the foundation for our next stage of growth. With that, operator, please open up the line for questions. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchtone phone. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. Our first question today comes from Colin Sebastian with Baird. Great, thanks. So good afternoon, guys. Um, nice to see the progress here. I, I guess first off, um, interested in, in Yelp Connect and the penetration you're seeing across services and multi-location accounts, and if there's a way to quantify how this is benefiting engagement with ads, with advertisers, retention, or any other relevant metrics. Hi, Colin. This is Jeremy. I'll hop in and take that one. So we're, we're very pleased with uh, our progress uh, with Yelp Connect. And, in fact, we talked about in the letter that we've released a new audience model, which boosted the performance, uh, particularly for services. And, you know, largely it's being bundled in as part of a, an upgrade package. That's essentially our new model uh, that we've been working uh, with. Uh, as we sell advertisers, we give them a whole host of different profile upgrades and include things like Connect. On the multi look side, we also saw in some encouraging early results uh, with some clients that we piloted with. And, uh, you know, they're essentially seeing better economics on their investment with Yelp uh, based on, on those studies. 
So overall, we're feeling really good about our progress with Connect. It seems to be adding value, lifting performance uh, for business advertisers that take advantage of it. And so we'll, we'll keep you posted on our progress there. Okay, great. And then um, secondly, uh, just on CPCs, maybe you could just walk through the moving parts, uh, why that shifted to a decline um, from, a, from growth. Yeah, you know, TPC is uh, a decline we see as a, a good thing uh, because ultimately that's more value flowing to our advertisers. So we, we like to see that. Uh, and, you know, what's driving that? Partially it says more traffic comes into the system. Obviously that's going to lower uh, prices, uh, which, again, is, is a good thing. But then also we're continually refining the ad system and improving the efficiency of that system. Uh, so when somebody's taking a look for a business, we want to show them the best possible ad uh, that we can. So we invest a lot of uh, our engineering and product bandwidth in making sure that those connections happen as efficiently as possible and we're using our inventory as efficiently as possible. So as we make progress with that, you know, it, it should uh, drive more value to businesses and ultimately lower prices, all things equal. All right, great. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. Our next question comes from Shweta Kajuria with Evercore ISI. Great, thank you. Uh, this is Jan Lee for Shweta. Um, maybe just a quick follow-up on that, um, the trend you're seeing in AdClick's progress and the CPC decline. If you can put any color around the linearity of that, you know, the traffic gets AdClick recovery into quarter and maybe into Q2. Um, and also the second question is just um, on the restaurant part, the restaurant cadence, uh, recovery cadence. Um, what are you hearing from the sales team regarding like the multi location business recovery, especially as we're getting into um, you know better pro progress with the vaccine penetration? Thank you. Hi, it's David. So um, I'll start off and, and talk about clicks, and then um, Jed will pick up around restaurants and, and multi location recovery. Um, we are seeing uh, good progress in the recovery of clicks, and that has continued over the course of the quarter. It's also important to appreciate that when we look at clicks, we're looking obviously across both our services business as well as uh, our restaurant business. And we were very pleased to see that we are restaurant on the restaurant side as traffic has increased we're also seeing a uh, commensurate increase in clicks there so overall making good progress as we move through the quarter i do think it's important to underscore that well we know that the the vaccine rollout has gone well today as we entered the quarter that was less clear with cases being very high and the rollout just at its initial stages and so what we are seeing is that progress as people feel more confident to go out. Hi, Jan. This is Jed. I can take the, uh, the, the restaurant's question. Um, obviously, you know, compared to services, our restaurant retail and other category um, is down more uh, year over year, um, although we are seeing nice signs of recovery there. Um, you know, we're down uh, about 15% year over year from a PAL perspective and doing about $81 million. Um, you know, those categories were hit hard, but, but we did look to preserve those relationships throughout COVID and, and, and often gave relief um, and, and free services and, and, and just worked to support kind of retention in that segment. You know, we are seeing page views and searches in, in, in restaurants rebound. Uh, they're up about 40% from December of 2020 um, and are at about 90% of those pre-COVID levels uh, as of April 2021. Uh, you know, multi-location, um, we typically see a dip early in Q1, and that was ex exacerbated this year with some of the COVID case counts moving up. But we did see progress across that segment throughout Q1 um, with uh, paying advertising locations kind of in the range of where we were uh, during Q4. Um, and so, you know, good momentum uh, 
during, during the quarter, uh, you know, coming out into March. Um, and we do see an opportunity to help these national brands with their reopening campaigns. And, and certainly when you look at national and the restaurant segment, there has been some structural movement towards pickup and delivery, but there is certainly demand building uh, both on the consumer side as well as on the business side for kind of in-store dining. Um, and we're seeing those trends um, and, and the strength in the pipeline kind of going throughout the, the, the um coming out of March. So, um, you know, attribution continues to be a very big part of that story, making sure we can kind of tie uh, both the store visits online as well as any offline conversions. Um, and, you know, we're just working hard to get back to our uh, original run rate within that restaurant, retail, and other segment. Thank you, Jeff. Our next question comes from Dan Salmon with BMO Capital Markets. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Jeremy, in the letter, you have a line teasing uh, some new self-service uh, investment opportunities you foresee as businesses reopen. Uh, any any color you care to add to that uh, about what's on uh, the self-service roadmap ahead in 2021? Uh, and then maybe just a quick one for David. Uh, the letter also highlights... Uh, lower healthcare costs than anticipated. Uh, it, I assume that's more than just on an absolute basis due to lower headcount. Is that on a, on a per employee basis? And so just uh, if you could add some color on that as well, would be great. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, happy to talk more about uh, self-service. Um, you know, going back to our long-term strategy, you know, a big part of that is our shift in, in go-to-market, uh, leaning into uh, really profitable channels like self-serve. Um, we made, you know, really healthy progress in that channel. Self-serve revenue, again, was up 30% year over year. Uh, and that's driven by retention uh, as well as acquisition. And, you know, some of our investment, of course, is happening uh, on the pure product side, just enhancing the flows, uh, you know, making... Uh, advertisers have an easier time to get started streamlining that. Uh, but then also, you know, some of the engineering and then marketing heft is happening on the performance marketing side. And so we're building, rapidly building muscle in that area as well. So those are, you know, some of the things that are driving the performance there. And Dan, this is David. Thanks for the question. On the healthcare expense, it is adjusted for headcount. Obviously, we were uh, modestly behind on headcount in the quarter, and so that has a, an effect. But we did see on a per employee basis that we had a lower expense per employee. And again, I think overall, as we've gone through the pandemic, um, we have been um, we have seen that employees have availed themselves less of healthcare than is probably the historical norm. And so that has uh, seemingly continued at least in the first quarter. Okay, great. Maybe just to follow up, I mean, is that just people needing to get back out and go into the doctor again? That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's this fundamental. People are pretty <laughs> apprehensive about heading out, and I think in particular to doctors' offices and maybe um, doing everything they should be doing. And so I would expect as people have gotten vaccinated and are more comfortable that we'd see uh, things uh, similar to what they have been on a historical basis. Okay, great. Thank you. Our next question comes from Egal Arunian with Wedbush Securities. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Um, I want to maybe spend a little bit of time on the uh, uh, non-term contract with pension rate. Um, obviously, doing a lot of things there to, to improve that. Um, and then you wrote in the, in the letter, lower CPCs contributed to um, a record retention rate there. So. Um, can you maybe spend a little, a little bit of time on uh, where, where you think you are there? You can continue to improve that retention rate, um, you know, and exactly what uh, kind of what you're trying to imply there with the lower CPCs. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we want to hang on to every customer that we possibly can deliver performance for. So that's been a, a big area of focus for us it's, and actually ties back to our long-term strategy of creating more value for our advertisers. We talked about in previous quarters just the percentage of monetized leads. I think in Q4, we were talking about something like 20%. We've made progress 
on that. But there's just an enormous amount of leads flowing through our system, many of which uh, aren't flowing to our advertisers. So we poured a lot of product and engineering bandwidth towards, you know, bringing that number up and making sure that our ads work uh, for our advertisers and are increasingly performant. And if you are one of our advertisers, you should feel that impact. You should be getting more customers and therefore stick with us longer. And it does seem like we are, are seeing that, you know, the, the impact of all of that work. You know, some of that shows up in, in lower pricing, uh, but it also shows up in retention. You know, there's another piece, too, which is as we've shifted our go-to-market uh, more towards self-serve, if you sell yourself the product, uh, you tend to stick longer. And so that's playing out as well. Uh, you know, we see better retention rates in our self-serve channel, and that's been growing uh, rapidly and represents about 40% of our SMB uh, starts at this point. Thanks. So on, on that point, um, just to follow up on self-serve versus sales, um, maybe obviously self-serve is, is contributing, growing faster. Um, are, are you where you want to be with um, the balance between self-serve and um, I know there's been a lot of focus on the local side, but maybe you could t just touch on both local and uh, multi-location. Thanks. Sure, this is Jed. Um, you know, I think uh, from a channel strategy perspective, um, you know, our long-term strategy, and we've talked about this for, for, you know, 18 months or so now, is to, you know, kind of shift a lot of that focus from local sales onto the self-serve and multi-location strategy. Um, and, you know, that was certainly accelerated by COVID. Right now, I think we have about 50% of the local sales force that we did, you know, kind of prior to the prior to the pandemic. Uh, but we're seeing, number one, uh, really nice production out of the existing salespeople, um, a lot of veteran kind of experience reps contributing from a production perspective. Um, but, you know, you are certainly seeing some of, some of that uh, acquisition come into self-serve, um, and, you know, we feel really comfortable with kind of the mix at this stage. Um, you know, we're going to continue to kind of improve that business owner platform uh, on, on the self-serve side, um, but it also benefits the, everybody we bring in on the, on, the, on the sales side as well. And on the, the multi-location side, we've been, you know, really focused on building out that team um, and specifically the attribution capabilities and products. Um, you know, we have to be able to prove that the dollars that are spent on the Yelp platform are actually yielding either online conversions and or in-store or in-restaurant um, consumers. And so, um, you know, that has been moving along nicely, and, and um, you know, we've seen a solid recovery in, in, in terms of those paying advertising locations in, in that uh, particular segment. Great. Thank you. Our next question comes from Chris Kuntarich with Deutsche Bank. Hi. Thanks for taking the question. Maybe a first one for David. Um, I think, uh, yeah, when, when you started, it was effectively around the time of COVID. And so I, I, I guess there it's been kind of noisy for you guiding, but um, it's been two quarters now in a row where you've been – uh, above the high end of your guide, and I don't think we've had a chance to ask you kind of how your philosophy is around guiding and whether or not kind of the guide is the guide or are you looking to do more of a beat and raise um, sort of strategy or, or approach to it. And then um, just could, could you help us think about uh, taking up the full year revenue guidance by $15 uh, million at the high end and then similarly taking an uh, EBITDA guidance up by the 25 Thanks. Thanks for the question, Chris. So a couple of pretty uh, important components. The first, of course, is that as we think about our business performance, what we want to ensure is that we're continuing to execute on our strategy. And what we saw in the first quarter is that our strategy is working. When you think about record services revenue, we can see that we are continuing to improve monetization, as Jeremy mentioned, and we're also in the process of enabling our self-serve customers to really do more and so retain better. When we look at self-serve starts, that's also doing incredibly well and retention. So as we think about the way that we want to approach forecasting, we want to continue to reflect in our forecast the momentum that we have in the business. And I guess I would remind you that as much as we're all looking forward to 
continued performance across the economy, uh, there continue to be uncertainties. And so it's the way, the way that I think about the guidance that we provide is that it's a balance between the visibility that we have, the uncertainties of our business, and ensuring that we are making strong progress against the goals that we've set for ourselves from a capital allocation perspective. So all three of those elements come together in the way that we present guidance. In terms of the full year numbers, clearly we were somewhat behind on hiring in the first quarter, and so we wanted to share or we actually have added into the guide for the year um, those numbers, but we expect to be back on track. One thing I would say about hiring in the first quarter, just to differentiate because product and engineering has become such an important part of our strategy, we're very pleased with our hiring there and that is very much on track. Where the hiring was a bit behind was in our local sales force and for that local sales force, we are beginning to make up ground here in the second quarter and continue to focus on it. The other thing is clearly we wanna be able to invest in marketing given the improvement and conversion that we've been driving when people land to the site and go through those self-service flows. So looking at the full year guide, uh, we definitely see that uh, we are doing well against the plan that we've set for ourselves. We're able and pleased to be able to raise the guide for the year, but there was a bit more in, from a cost perspective in the first quarter that had to do with performance against some of the hiring that we wanted to do. And that's why you'll see that adjusted EBITDA comes up a bit more than revenue. Got it. Uh, very helpful. And, and maybe if I could just have one follow-up for either Jeremy or Jed. Um, there's been a lot of news lately around the $29 billion uh, restaurant revitalization fund, and it, it seems like the spending should be pretty open-ended as far as how the restaurants could be able to uh, spend these dollars that they'll uh, be receiving. So I was just curious if you guys – yeah, is there anything specific that you have lined up at this point to go and try to capture the advertising dollars that are going to be – spinning off from uh, this revitalization fund as uh, these restaurants get back up and running. Uh, this is Jeremy. I mean, our perspective is businesses are, you know, getting back to it and we want to participate in that. So we have definitely put together reopening plans uh, and making sure that our marketing, marketing team is reaching out and getting the message out and driving as much self-serve as possible, as well as activating our local sales team, as well as our multi-location team. So, you know, from a general account of like, hey, are we tackling the, the reopening and are we excited about it and are we getting our teams oriented around it? Absolutely. You know, do we have specific initiatives against the revitalization fund? No, but obviously if, if businesses have more money in hand, that should be a good thing. So we're, we're happy to see any additional funds that, that flow into restaurant retail and retail. Got it. Thanks. Our next question comes from Trevor Young with Barclays. Hi, thanks for taking the questions. Um, just two from me, um, dovetailing on one of the earlier questions, can you provide an update on the results you're seeing with bundling? It seems like um, you're leaning in there. And I'd just be curious, you know, some early learnings from the upgrade package as well as the combination on reservations and wait lists. Um, and then separately, um, what contributed to the acceleration in re request to quote growth this quarter? Thanks. Sure, Trevor. I can take the first one. It's Jed um, on the bundling. Um, you know, we've been really pleased with the results thus far on the bundling. I think it goes back to, to what Jeremy was talking about prior, which is just providing more value for our customers. Um, you know, we have different forms of bundles depending on what what vertical you're in, you know, on the restaurant side, you know, we can do things like bundle wait list plus ads plus connect. Um, and it turns out that those three things, as an example, work in tandem to create a lot of value for our customers and, and, and create some stickiness there. And, 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 and we're seeing that, um, you know, on the services side, you know, you look at the introduction of things like logo and portfolio. And if I'm in the services business, this gives me just another reason to kind of distinguish myself from 
the crowd and, you know, in circumstances as an example, um, and, or verified license as an example, you know, um, in cer- situations where someone may not have uh, as much of a reputation on Yelp, it gives a palette for those service customers to actually go out and tell their story and tell why they're trustworthy. And so we feel like the bundling strategy, you know, it's, it's, it's in its early days and, and you know, we're going to have um, a, a, a variety of those kind of going forward as we add product into the mix. Um, but we're happy with the bundling thus far and, and, and you should, uh, you know, are, are looking towards kind of continuing on that path. And for the second part of the question, uh, request to quote uh, growth. We're very pleased to see uh, request growth 30% year over year, uh, as you mentioned. Um, you know, what's happening in the, in the macro is obviously, you know, COVID has, uh, has uh, ended up with a lot of people moving house. Uh, and when you're doing that, there's all sorts of home services that can go along with that, whether you're getting ready to sell or whether you're moving into a new place or whether you're spreading the night up uh, for work from home. Uh, all of that has created, you know, ro- robust consumer demand. And I think that's also reflected pulling back a second to our, if you look at our home services revenue performance up 15% year over year, uh, you know, that's really great to see as well. Um, you know, what else, uh, or what, what are we specifically doing to drive some of that performance? Well, you know, we have tons of leads flowing through our system. We talked about how, you know, approximately 20% in Q4 were, were monetized. We're continuing, continuing to make improvements to drive more of those leads into our advertisers raising performance. We're also trying to improve our matching. Uh, so every time that we're pulling up different potential advertisers to match with a consumer's request. We want to get those as accurate as possible so we're not wasting any of our inventory. We're also making slow improvements, uh, just making it easier for consumers to make that request, making it more accurate, collecting the right information based on the category, things like that. So I think all of those elements are, are combining to, to deliver the performance that you saw. And you know, we're pleased with it. It's been a, a real area of focus. And you know, fundamental services is a core part of our long-term strategy. That's really helpful. Just a, a follow up on that. Um, can you provide an update on the percentage of monetized leads there versus the, the four Q step? It has improved uh, since Q4. Great. Thanks. I don't know, David, if we have any more color than that. We, we're uh, we're not providing additional detail on the progress that we're making and that we made here in the in the first quarter, remain focused on it, and as Jeremy said, it has improved. Great, thanks. If you have further questions, please press star and then one at this time. Seeing no further questions, oh, we actually have a follow-up from Chris Kunterich with Deutsche Bank. Yep, uh, just quick follow-up on thinking through PAL uh, versus revenue for PAL. Could you help us think about it on a sequential basis and uh, from 1Q? And I saw you had made the comment in the letter that uh, PAL, PAL is in, in aggregate. We're back to 4Q or roughly around 4Q levels in March. So I was just curious if this implies that service PALs uh, grew throughout the quarter or if this was just restaurants. Thanks. Sure. This is uh, this is Jed, Chris. I can take that. Um, you know, our, our, our PALs. Uh, you know, from a services perspective, um, you know, we were down four percent year over year, whereas restaurant, retail, and other down fifteen percent. And so, you know, you, there's certainly uh, it makes a lot of sense if you think about kind of how the recovery has happened thus far. Um, although we did see uh, acceleration in, in PALs throughout the quarter, uh, particularly in multi-loc, where we're back to kind of Q4 levels in terms of, of, of where we are. Um, you know, um, we expect that, you know, services will continue to be kind of resilient for us um, and, uh, you know, restaurant, retail, and other, you know, to, to, to make some progress as the recovery continues. You know, ultimately, we're focused on both kind of the revenue per PAL as well as the number of PALs um, and have, a, you know, a bunch of initiatives on, on both fronts. You should, you know, expect that some of those metrics can fluctuate, um, especially within the retail, restaurant, and other segment over time, depending on you know, uh, seasonality and, and, and other factors like that. 
Got it. Thanks. This will conclude our question and answer session as well as today's conference call. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect.